When I was a child uh, in the 70s in Budapest, Hungary, I was so sure that by this time we would be living in space. Time was also different. I had the luxury of being bored. <laughs> I remember that I would read a book and having finished it, I would start over right after to read it again. I felt I could read every book. I could visit every country. I could sample any meal. Well, maybe with the meals, sir, I still feel like that a little bit. <laughs> and then I started to understand that actually I was mortal. And technically, superficially at least, that I had to start understanding what my priorities were. Did it happen when my father died or when I had my own children uh, in my 20s? In any case, opportunity costs, resource allocations, these considerations started to play a role in the way I would think about time and what I could achieve and what I could do. And then, as an entrepreneur and an investor, I realized that the careful analysis is not always possible or even the best way to go. When you look at disruptive opportunities that we are seeing around us shaping society, that we are living, the computers, the smartphones, the Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, these are shaping our world. Many of those inventions are realized by thinkers and even more importantly, doers who are courageous enough to go beyond the boundaries of the reality shared by many. And indeed, I have a group of friends who are working as we speak on checking off one by one the causes of death in order to extend biological life, in order to allow us to live on average 100, 120, 150 maybe or more. And many of us are excited about that possibility. And what they mean, of course, is not progressively becoming ever more decrepit, <laughs> mummified in our robotic wheelchairs. What they mean is healthy lifespans that we can enjoy, where we can build new skills, help others, strengthen communities. Until such time that the proverbial bus hits us <laughs> because you can repair a lot of things, but it is not easy to back, put back together the, the squishy material <laughs> of our brain, barely protected by our cranium where we understand our consciousness, our very essence lives. Well, here is another group of friends. They are working under the assumption that the current technology that allows us to analyze and record the functioning of the brain can proceed and progress, becoming ever more effective, similarly to how primitive computers in the 40s and 50s became the incredible tools of magic that all of us are carrying now in our pockets. 
that in essence, it is possible to create a backup copy of the mind and when needed, eventually to restore it in a substrate that will be sturdier, more resistant, and will last longer, but that it will, able, it will be able to support the same kind of subjective experience that we call self-awareness, living, experiencing the world. And so maybe one day you will meet me in my shiny new robotic body. And as I greet you, you will be able to ask yourself questioningly, um, suspiciously, why not? Is this really David? And then we will have a series of conversations. Uh, you will test my past memories. Uh, you will try me whether I am uh, reacting the same way to jokes that you tell, whether I can tell a joke, and any other way to establish uh, whether you should abandon your skepticism and embrace me, uh, maybe even physically, uh, to feel that I am still there. So the fact that this may actually happen comes from uh, experience of changes in society where very um, unexpected things surprised a lot of us uh, and we felt discomfort in their becoming part of society and everyday life until a new generation came for whom it was just part of their natural world. The power of the habits that drive us day after day where we can walk and we assume that the um, the rain under our feet will hold. It will be solid enough until we find quicksand. Or an assumption which is universally shared, at least I hope, that as we go uh, to sleep, the next day we will wake up. And having awoken, actually, we haven't just been instantiated, like having been born as adults, including all of our memories, but that remembering yesterday is a reality that joins us together. The nature of the new world that will rise from sharing the planet with other humans that are not necessarily made out of meat is going to be strange. And oftentimes, of course, there are unexpected consequences of technologies. Most commonly, the analysis is, well, they can be used for good and for bad. And those of us who look at the history of civilization and claim that it is because of our capacity to apply reason and science that technology was able to build the wonderful world and our global civilization and give opportunities to seven billion people and more to fulfill their potential. We want technologies to be good on balance. Unexpected still they may be. Indeed, rather than the new shiny robotic body and the synthetic but genuinely human mind that inhabits it being just a backup to be used in case of emergency, what will unavoidably happen, maybe with teenagers first, is to start booting up these copies in parallel instead. Because there is no reason not to. It is an experiment that somebody will try and somebody else will copy and then it will spread like a virus. Imagine the possibilities. Passion and creativity in an abundance 
that we have never seen before. Any skill, any experience, there will be no problem that is deep that we wouldn't be able to analyze and to address. And of course, in a world as full of possibilities as the one you and I share, where we are always looking out, what are the things that we should be doing instead of the ones that we are doing right now? The phones that drive our attention deficit disorder and enhance it and increase it because of our fear of missing out is going to change into a new world of a new hashtag. We will welcome no FOMO. And then, whether after a minute or an hour or a month, we will recognize and realize the dozen of me or so that I booted up, having started from a common set of memories and experiences, will naturally diverge. Their experiences will be different and their memories will accrue and their reactions, their instincts will be shaped by those. And this will be, give rise to new kinds of rituals. Maybe every year or every decade, we will regroup in a circle. And we will try to see how to merge these experiences. We will very carefully prune the trees of our adventures in order to keep the best, in order to grow together. And in these rituals, there will be a couple of me missing. When we come together, we will understand. One of me missing will be he who chose death after eliminating every cause that today we call natural, the only human and humane way to die is going to be by choice. The other of me missing is going to be the one that accelerated by laser beams at a speed approximating that of light is now connected with a bandwidth of communication that is ever closer to zero, cannot share the experiences as he's leaving the solar system to explore the universe. Certainly, this is a fairy tale, you will tell me. There are those who deny even, in principle, the possibility of finding a path towards this world even before considering whether it is desirable. We have been wrong in the past a lot about things that experts told us were not possible. The leading physicist of the time, just a year or so before the Wrights brothers' revolutionary first flight, denied the possibility of heavier than air human-powered flight splitting an atom, putting our feet on the moon. So many things we thought were impossible. Going beyond our comfort zone in understanding how technology shapes society, how society gives rise to new possibilities for individuals, groups that aspire, is what these narratives are for. And the narratives of science fiction writers are creating a reality of their own almost as a self-fulfilling prophecy because they inspire engineers and scientists with incredible possibilities and they have the skills and the ingenuity to turn them into reality. In that way, technology is an almost unstoppable force that we have the duty to analyze, to understand. And 
as you go home and think about what kinds of lives we will be able to live, that is when you will reevaluate your own identity and you will think about what it will mean to live parallel lives. Thank you.